welcome to ABC Racing, where I teach you that being fast is as easy as ABC. Accelerating, braking and control. In today's challenge I'll be driving the BMW M4 around the Nürburgring in the GT Sprint format. This is the same car that we drove in the last challenge I uploaded, but it's not got the Akrapovic exhaust system fitted to it so it's a little bit down in power it's a little bit heavier and it doesn't sound quite as nice as the Akrapovic exhaust system version of the car overall though the car is still a powerful beast it's got 431 brake horsepower with 550 newton meters of torque and the torque as as i said in the previous video it is kind of spread over a nice bandwidth of RPM so you don't ever really feel down on power as long as you're revving over 2000 to 2500 RPM you've got plenty of power there the big problem with this car is the weight and how long it takes to actually stop it you'll notice down into turn one we need 200 meters of hard braking to get it stopped going into turn one one thing I didn't talk about in the last video was that it's got a sequential gearbox so that makes it really nice and easy to drive. I don't have to worry about the manually shifting gears with my H pattern. Um, but what that does do as well though is it um, means you can't force it into a lower gear. So if the RPMs are too high you can't just downshift it. Uh, the protection will come in and it'll stop you from downshifting which also reduces your slowing speed and therefore increases your stopping distance and the other thing i didn't really mention but it was evident from watching the replays back myself was just how much this uh, car wants to to lean and pitch so stability is key when it comes to handling for this car because you're braking hard you can see how much the car is pitching forward and you've got to get it stable again then before you accelerate out to the corner. If you don't get the stability right, then you can't maximise the grip and you won't get the best exits of the corners and you'll be leaving time on the table. So it's important to make sure you are trailing off the brake with this car. So those of you who know in Nürburgring, the GT Sprint layout is basically turn 1 is the same, turn 2 is the same, turn 3 is the same and turn 4 is the same. It's at turn 5. Instead of turning left, we turn right and take a shortcut then to rejoin at what would be turn 11. There are some challenges that I'll be doing at a later point on the Nordschleife track. I don't know it particularly well, so that's why I'm leaving some of them challenges for a bit later when I have had time to, to practice and be able to get the lap times. At the end of the hot lap, I will go through the sector and I'll also go through the telemetry. The time to beat for gold achievement is 142.5 and only 0.7% of all the set of closer players have this achievement. So with that said and done, let's get into it. As always, it's important to get a good exit into the last corner onto the main straight so you get a good run on your half lap. That doesn't look the tidiest on this lap for me, but let's see how it goes. So I can see I'm hemorrhaging time down the straight already. Luckily, it's quite a long straight for this car, and therefore, by the time I get to the start finish line, I've actually stabilised the loss. I said in the intro we need 200 meters to break, but I actually break 150 meters in this lap. As so I got the speed down, I used rotation to try and scrub off some more speed into that first corner. Just slightly tap the brake going into this left hand corner. That's just to stop the understeer, because otherwise you'll lose time. Should I use a bit of exit curb brake now? Because we're turning and braking at the same time, we can't use the full effect of the brakes. Keep it tight to the inside to maximize the entry into the next corner. Ride the curb and use all the exit curb you need. Looking for the 100 meter brake marker board for the next right down corner. It's a bit bumpy and it's a bit off camber as well, so it's important to get the right speed on the entry to the corner. Get a late apex and use some of the exit curb, but not too much because it then stabilizes the car. It's a fast left down corner next, so get over to the right hand side of the track. 
break now and feather the throttle, keeping you in third through this left hander. It's a fast right hander now, downhill and slightly off camber as well. Keep it tight through the corner and take all of the exit curve. Look at my delta now, I'm 1.1 seconds ahead. I think I haven't driven the car recently, it's really helped my confidence. Flat out right hander, don't scrub off too much speed. Braking at the 150 metre brake marker. Keep the car straight, be aggressive on the brake. The third gear chicane, left right. Use both apex curves and then use the exit curb as well. Maximise your run to the last corner. The grid box is a brake reference. Flick it down into second, keep it tight and get a late apex. Straighten the wheel and use all of the exit curb. Keep it straight down the main straight so you're not scrubbing off any speed. And there we go, that's the silver and the gold. Lost a bit of time through the chicane in the last corner, but it was still enough. The camber in the front was 1.5 and the rear is 1.1. A tow of 4 in the front and 23 24 in the rear. Fuel was at 14 litres. Tire pressures were 29, 27, 29, 27. I found changing the tow was what gave me a little bit more bite into the corners. Apart from that, it was quite easy to get this achievement. So, looking at the telemetry now, I only took 11 laps to actually get this achievement. I compared it to my previous best. You can see from a map of Track Titan that it hasn't picked up that I've been doing the short GT sprint version of the track. Looking where I've lost the time, it was obviously in the last three corners. So going into the last corner first. I'm able to see that my racing line, I didn't break early enough and therefore I run wide, missed the apex of the start. And that's where I lost speed there. So that was 0.3 seconds down. Um, look at my throttle trace because obviously I've run wide. I'm not on the throttle as early as my best, my previous best lap. So that's why I've lost the time again. I'm just losing time by not breaking early enough. Now you can see when I try and look at my break in, the track Titan map is all wrong. So it's really difficult to, to get a good comparison for this track. Ultimately, I don't think it matters too much because we can see anyway where we've lost the time. So clicking into oversteering now, just so that we can see the difference to reference. And you can see a sort of mid corner onwards is where we go up to 0.4 seconds behind the one point. But we do get a better exit, so it kind of goes back down to 0.30. I click on the segment 11 then, which is actually the exit to the chicane. And you can see from the exit there, I'm actually slower, sort of mid corner first corner i do get a better exit out of that chicane so i have got a bit more speed in the exit clicking on break in it's actually going to show the break in then for the final corner and you can just see that i broke too late so when i say use the grid reference as your break in mark marker for that corner i mean the first one you see on the left hand side you want to be using that as your reference point, not the second one, like I did on this lap. So I did do a good job with braking though. Got up to 100% braking and then uh, got off the brake smoothly as well. But it was all just a bit too late. Clicking on using the grip, it's not giving me any sort of useful data there. Clicked on to understeering. You can see from the understeering, I understeer slightly going into the chicane and slightly into the final corner well actually a lot into the final corner it's gone red there are points there and that's simply just we're being too fast into the corner i'm eight or nine kilometers an hour faster into that corner than my previous lap so there's time to be found in the middle of the chicane and then obviously on the entry to the last corner my throttle trace shows that actually i managed to get full throttle halfway through the chicane Whereas I didn't on my previous best lap. And I'm managing to upshift earlier as well. Then clicking on the segment 10. Which again the map's all wrong. Uh, but it showed my braking going into chicane. I get on the brake at pretty much exactly the same time. But I'm on it for half the length of time on my fastest lap. And I reapply the brake which is just losing time. So looking at the racing line I'm not going to see anything with this map. I can see my speed much faster at the beginning part of the chicane, but I lose it throughout. 
Uh, and the steering, you can't see anything. You can see that I actually gain going into the first part of the chicane. I'm 0.2 seconds up, but I lost it on the exit. So I lost 0.35 on the exit of the corner. So you, you can see that really, again, through poor braking, that's where I've lost the time there. So you can see the importance again on the brakes, the right amount of pressure at the right time, releasing it at the right time is what makes you fast. To learn those braking points, that's the first thing to learn. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you liked the video. Tell me if you didn't um, what it is you want me to change. Cheers. Have a good day.